the two separate things, all right? Because I was in the media last month. Was it last month? Where well, you have some Israelites that smoke weed and sell drugs having gunfights with the Latin kings. That is not us, all right? The Israelites, according to the Bible, which are you black Filipinos, are supposed to repent of your sins. You've got many Israelite groups out here that sprouting up, learning this truth, but they've not repented of their sins. They're still in the midst of adultery, drug using, okay, drug selling, violence, hatred, just like many of you in the Christian churches. So there's no difference between them and you either. The only difference is that they know their origin and you don't. You blacks that believe you are Negroes and West Indians, you're still in darkness. You're still confused as the day you were brought upon the earth. You're the Israelites that Christ died for, okay? Give me the scripture in Deuteronomy 22, verse 5. No, John 14, 15. Let's start there first with Jesus the Christ. Because a lot of you say you've repented of your sins. You say you've been baptized, washed your blood and lamb. I'm going to tell you right now. All that is garbage. You know why that's garbage? Because you're still in the midst of your sins. You know the proof that you're still in your sins? The women are still dressed as men, meaning pants. And you've got an August camera there, which is put in the worst crime-ridden neighborhood. So when you blacks say you're washing the blood of the lamb, you're, you're water baptized, BS. You're still in the midst of idolatry, adultery, hatred, gossip, tail-bearing, backbiting, homosexuality. That's what fills the black community. That's what fills our community. John chapter 14, verse 15. John 14, verse 15. If you love me, keep my commandments. Christ said, if you love me, keep my commandments. Like a lot of you women out here, a lot of you black women, black men, you all say you love Jesus the Christ. But he said, if you love him, keep the commandments. Let's read a commandment, please. Deuteronomy 22, verse 5. Let's read a commandment for you Christian black women who's washed in the blood of the Lamb, water baptized. Let's see the love of Jesus upon you. Come on, Deuteronomy 22, verse 5. The woman shall not wait. Read it again. Say where you're reading and read. Deuteronomy 22, verse 5. The woman shall not wear that which pertains unto a man. The woman shall not wear that which pertains to a man. Neither shall a man put on a woman's garment. Neither shall a man put on a woman's garment. Now you all understand that bottom part. Neither shall a man put on a woman's garment. If you see a man with a skirt or a dress or a bra, you say he's what? A faggot. Right? But let's read the top part again. The woman shall not wear that which pertains unto a man. The woman shall not wear that which pertains to a man. What's that talking about for you Christians out there? Pants. Pants. And you ask a lot of these women, why do you wear pants? Nine out of ten of them say, I wear pants because I get cold. You know how that's a lie? We, we went to Trinidad and taught out there for two weeks. What were the women wearing 98 degrees weather? Pants. Now I'm going to read something to you from Essence Magazine. This month, Essence Magazine, the cover, it says jeans, perfect jeans for your butt, hips, and thighs. So what are they revealing that why women wear pants? Why do these women wear pants? I'm going to read this again. Perfect jeans for your butt, hips, and thighs. It's to show their shape. Where do we read this from? Essence Magazine. So it's not how I feel or what I think. They're revealing to you why women wear these pants. To show their butt, hips, and thighs. Now I'm going to hit you to something new. New Year's Eve, I had to work out on New Year's Eve. I'm standing outside New Year's Eve. Every black and Latino woman, how cold was it? It was like 15 below. They were wearing micro mini skirts. If they bent a little bit, you could see their crotch heads. And you ask them, wait a minute, it's cold out here. Why are you wearing micro mini skirts? Because you obviously are not cold. They want to show their body. They said, this is a day to celebrate. I got to shake my stuff. That was New Year's Eve, 15 below zero. My, no, not even fancy holes. They had six-inch heels, micro-miniscus shaking with the mother game. So it was
But see, it's so, a lot of these women lie when they say they wear pants because they cold. That's a lie. Read Deuteronomy 22 and 5 again. Deuteronomy 22 verse 5. The woman shall not wear that which pertaineth unto a man. So God says a woman shall not wear that which pertains to a man, meaning pants, dressing out of order. That's how we know the black community is not repenting of their sins. Just look at the women. They are not repenting of their sins based on the way they're dressed. That's clue number one. See, we didn't got to get to the crime, the rape, the child molestation. We won't get to that later. But just by eye observation, you can tell that our communities are not repentant of their sins. So John chapter 14, hold that. Go back to John chapter 14 and verse 15 again about the love of Jesus. Come on. John 14 verse 15. John chapter 14 verse 15. John 14 verse 15. If you love me, keep my commandments. Jesus Christ, the Savior, he said what? If you love me, keep my commandments. Christ said, if you love me, keep my commandments. What is Christ's commandment? The whole Bible. Because Hebrews, in the book of Hebrews, Christ said, Lo, I come in the volume of the book. Get me that in Hebrew. I think it's Hebrews 10 and 7. Get me that so that you know that these are not my words. Because some people say Christ only comes in the New Testament. That's a lie. That's a lie to keep sin alive. Hebrews 10 verse 7. Hebrews 10 verse 7. Then said I, Lo, I come in the volume of the book. It is written of me. To do thy will, O God. Christ said, Lo, I come in the volume of the book. What is the volume of the book? Genesis to Revelation. But in churches they say, no, 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 no. Don't read that Old Testament. Why do they say don't read the Old Testament? Because that's where all the laws are written. Now Matthew 5, 17. Let's get out of Christ's mouth to see if the laws are done away with. Let's read that out of his mouth. Let's see. Because Christianity teaches us God's laws are done away with. When you say God's laws are done away with, you're saying keep sin alive. Keep, what does the world call sin? Crime. They call sin crime. Like I said earlier, the August camera on these street corners is put in the worst crime-ridden neighborhoods. The most sinful neighborhoods. So when you go to these churches, they say, forget God's laws. Forget about them. Don't do them. Do you not know that God's law says thou shalt not steal? So when you do away with that, what do young black men do? Knock black women upside the head, steal their purse, and run down the street. Because black women in church say, the law is done away with. Then what happens? The black man come out of jail. He had a woman in five years. He seen a woman walk down with the tightest jeans. He knocks her upside the head, drags her in the alleyway, rapes her. Then the church goes, the laws are done away. You foolish people. How are you going to teach young children the laws are done away with? Then wonder why crime is rising every year. Because of your lousy, lying churches. Where did I say go? Matthew 5, verse 17. Matthew 5, 17. Think not that I am... Come on, I need you to read stronger. Think not that I am come to destroy the law. Christ said, think not that I am come to destroy the law. So what does that mean? Don't let it enter your brain that Christ came to destroy the law. But every black church out here teaches us the laws are done away with. But minister, how come crime is at an all-time high? How come AIDS is at an all-time high? The laws are done away with. But the law said, no, forget that law. The laws are done away with. Read it again. Matthew 5, 17. Think not that I am come to, the, to destroy the law or the prophets. So Christ said out of his own mouth, think not that I have come to destroy the law or the prophets. What does that mean? Because there are many prophecies that are yet to be fulfilled. Christ said he didn't come to destroy nothing. Come on. I am come not to destroy, but to fulfill. Christ said I'm not come to destroy anything, but to fulfill. What did Christ fulfill? He fulfilled the law of sacrifice. I'm going to say it again. Christ fulfilled the law of sacrifice. That's the difference from the old covenant and the new covenant. Give me that in Hebrews chapter... Eight, thank you. Hebrews chapter 8, start at verse 7. About the old covenant and the new covenant. What is the difference? Hebrews 8, start at verse 7. You got it? 
Hebrews 8, verse 7. For if that first covenant had been faultless, or if that first covenant had been faultless, what was the first covenant? The first covenant was given to the Israelites that if they broke a strength of law, you had to sacrifice a lamb for your sin. But what happened when we went in, when the Israelites went into slavery? They could not offer a sacrifice in slavery, like when you read the book of Daniel. The Babylonians wasn't letting them sacrifice. The Assyrians wasn't letting them sacrifice. The Greeks wasn't letting the Israelites sacrifice. Read it again. Hebrews 8, verse 7. For if that first covenant had been faultless, there was great, there were many faults with the first covenant. Because animal sacrifice could not rid us of our sins. It could not bring us to the kingdom of heaven on earth. Then should no place have been sought for the second. So if the first covenant had been without fault, fault, there would have been no reason to have a second covenant. Come on. For finding fault with them. For finding fault with them. The them is the Israelites, because that's who y'all are. You're the biblical Israelites. I don't care if you call yourself niggas, blacks or West Indies. You're God's chosen people. That's who you are. You're the children of Israel. Read it again. For, for if that first covenant have been faultless, then should no place have been sought for the second. For finding fault with them, or finding fault with them, the them is the Israelites. What was the fault with the Israelites? We couldn't walk perfectly in the old covenant. We kept stumbling and making sins, making errors. So for finding fault with them, he said, Behold, the days come, said the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah. Did that say make a new covenant with all nations on the earth? With the house of Israel and with the house of Judah. Did that say make a new covenant with the white man, the Japanese man, the African man? With the house of Israel and with the house of Judah. This verse condemns Christianity because Christianity teaches the new covenant is for anybody that believes in Jesus. That's not in the Bible. Read it again. For finding fault with them, he says, Behold, the days come, said the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah. The house of Israel and the house of Judah are you blacks and Latinos. That's the house of Israel and the house of Judah because we were split into two families. That's why during 1492 when the Spaniards came and conquered the Puerto Ricans, the Mexicans, the Dominicans, give me some more, mm. El Salvadorians, no, okay, Guatemalans, Panamanians, the Indians I'm talking about. Then they brought the blacks over in the 1600s to serve slavery with them. Those were the two families, the two kingdoms. We were made to serve slavery together. Read it again for finding fault with them. For finding fault with them, he said, Behold, the days come, said the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah. Not according to the covenant that I made with their father. Not according to the covenant that I made with... The word covenant means agreement. That's what the word covenant. The word covenant means agreement or testament. Read it again. Not according to the covenant that I made with their fathers in the day when I took them by the hand to lead them out of the land of Egypt. When God led us out of Egypt by the hand of Moses, who was in... We went, where were we? In captivity in Africa. The Israelites were in captivity in Africa. That's who we are. That's who we be. It was one dark nation enslaving another dark nation. The ancient Egyptians are the modern day Watusis, men of stature. They had us in captivity. Read it again. Not according to the covenant that I made with their fathers in the day when I took them by the hand to lead them out of the land of Egypt. When God by the hand of Moses led us out of Africa, what was the covenant he gave to us? Animal sacrifice. He said, if you Israelites sin, you are to sacrifice a lamb, a sheep, a goat, a bull, or a turtle dove for whatever the sin is. Come on. And guess what? For some sins, there was no sacrifice. For example, if you committed adultery with a woman, there was no sacrifice. You had to die. If you were a homosexual, there was no sacrifice for that sin. You had to die. If you cursed your mother, there was no sacrifice for that either. You had to die. If you worshipped a graven image, like y'all got them here in your churches, you had to die. That's what the old covenant said. But let's read on about the new covenant. Because they continued not in my covenant. We didn't continue in the old covenant because we broke it and went into slavery. 
And I regarded them not. And God regarded us not, meaning he made us go into slavery. Said the Lord, for so this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days. Behold, this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days. What is those days? The those days of the old covenant. Said the Lord, I will put my laws into their minds. I will put my laws into their minds. So why do y'all say the laws are done away with? Why do you say God's laws are done away with? The Bible says the new covenant is the laws must be in your mind. You got to know these laws. Your children are supposed to know God's laws and keep God's laws. That's what the new covenant is about. Come on. And write them in their heart. And I will be to them a God and they shall be to me a people. I will be to them a God and they shall be to me a people. See, everybody is not the people of God. God has one people that he chose. That's the children of Israel. That's what Paul is revealing in Hebrews chapter 8. Now go to Romans chapter 11 and verse 1. Because another lie is that anybody is God's people. God did away with the children of Israel. Mm -mm. When God says he regarded the Israelites not, it means he sent them into slavery. That's what happened to our ancestors. That's where we're at today. Slavery. Oh, you think we came to America of our, on our own volition? We just wanted to come here. We just wanted to come on. Oh, you went to Jamaica on your own volition too, right? You just wanted to go there. No, you didn't. You were brought there shackled, bound, and chained. Your grandmothers, your grandfathers, fathers, mothers, and your children. Shackled, bound, and chained. And we can prove that in the Bible too. Yeah, of course, brother. You can ask the question. Yes, yes. Let me come over here to you. And there was no sacrifice given? Yes. Would that mean there was no forgiveness? In the old covenant for those for certain sins? Yes. So let me ask you one more question. Yes. What happened to King David? I was going to get there. I was going to get there. What happened to King David? Right. He murdered King David, like the brother said, murdered, committed adultery. He did all that. The most high, what we are going to find out, he was a feeling mercy to the Israelites because he made a promise to David that if David seed, he would always have a king to sit upon the throne. Okay? Now, get me Deuteronomy, sit back over here. Get me Deuteronomy 18, no, Leviticus 18 and 20. Leviticus 18 and 20. There were many sins that there was no sacrifice for, but the Most High did reveal mercy to certain people. That was an evidence of mercy in Christ. That's what all that was about. Okay? Leviticus 18, let me look at it. Leviticus 18 and Deuteronomy 22, 22. That's what I want. Bear with me. Deuteronomy 22, I think it's verse 22. Yeah. Deuteronomy 22, verse 22. Okay? Deuteronomy 22, verse 22. If a man be found lying with a woman, married to an husband, like Bathsheba was found laying with David, who was married, Bathsheba was married to Uriah the Hittite, then they shall both of them be die. Then they shall both of them die. Is that it? Both the man that lay with the woman and the woman. Both the man that lay with the woman and the woman. So what happened? What was the judgment that God passed on David? He said, I won't kill you, David, but I'll kill what? What did he kill? He killed his firstborn child. Now go to Romans chapter 9 about mercy. Romans chapter 9 about mercy. You got the verse? Call it and read it. I just want the part about mercy. Uh, for whom therefore I... Oh, right here. Uh, I raise up that I might show... Therefore I... Th right, verse 18. Romans 9, verse 18. Therefore I had the mercy on whom he will have mercy. Therefore hath he mercy on whom he will have mercy. Just like Aaron the high priest, he set up a golden calf, right? And God was going to kill Aaron. Moses interceded and prayed for Aaron. The most I said, I'm going to spare Aaron's life because the judgment was death when Aaron set up that golden calf. Read it again. Read it strong. Romans 9 verse 18. Therefore I had he mercy on whom he will have mercy and whom he will harden. God will say that unto me, why does he yet find fault? You will say then, why does God yet find fault with the people? 
For who has resisted his will? Who has resisted the will of God? If he has mercy on whom he desires to have mercy, and whom he hardens, he desires to harden. Nay, but O man, who art thou that replies against God? Who art thou that replies against God? That means the Most High, we have nothing to say when, when the Most High brings judgment. If he has, like you could have two brothers, two men, both commit the same sin, but the Most High can say, you know what? This one right here I'm going to destroy. But this one I'm going to allow to live for a little bit longer. You read that many times in the Bible like you read about Jacob and Esau. Jacob supplanted Esau of the birthright, and the Most High said he did what with Esau? What do you say regarding Esau? What do you mean, uh, yeah, read verse 13, Romans 9, 13. Romans? Romans 9, verse 13. As it is written, Jacob have I loved, but Esau have I hated. What shall we say then? Is there unrighteousness with God? So because God hated Esau, you know who Esau is today? Who is that? Oh no, it is important. It is important. Esau is the so-called white man today. No. We, oh, no, we're going to talk about that. We're going to talk about that. Esau is the so-called white man. You said that's not true? Okay. Before I get to that, let me finish with this young man right here. So now, read that again. Romans 9 verse 13. As it is written, Jacob have I loved, but Esau have I hated. So Jacob are the ch 12 tribes of Israel. That's who Jacob is. The black man and black woman out here, they're Jacob, they're Israel. Now they might want to say, no, I'm just a nigger. That's fine with you. You can stay there and be that. But we're the Israelites, okay, that the Bible speaks of. And the white man is Esau. I'm going to say it again. Come on. As it is written, Jacob have I loved, but Esau have I hated. What shall we say then? Is there unrighteousness with God? Is there unrighteousness with God because he chose you and despises the white man? Is there unrighteousness? God forbid. The answer is no. God forbid. For he said to Moses, for he said to Moses, I will have mercy on whom I will have mercy. I will have mercy on whom I will have mercy. Meaning, God does the choosing. Not on any of us. We don't choose who God should have mercy on or whom he shouldn't. For example, there was a man in the book of Numbers who picked up sticks on the Sabbath day. Moses said, God, what should we do? What did God say? Kill him. God said, kill him. Then there was another man who stole a garment and hid the garment and hid the gold. Joshua said, God, what should we do? What did God say do? Kill him. Now, many of these sins that we read about, we're guilty of today. Do we pick up sticks on the Sabbath, meaning shop, buy, and sell? Yeah, we do. you see shopping bags all over the place. Some of us just bought Popeye's chicken. Today's God's Sabbath day. We still disregard, but the Lord is merciful on us temporarily. He's merciful until judgment starts to come forth. And judgment can be right now. Judgment can be in a few minutes as we step into the street. That's right. That's right. That's the question. Same thing because it's going to come up with the same question the lady said, hey, you know, Esau. Yeah. Right? Don't you believe that we are elaborating a little bit when we say that the Edomite is the white man? Let me make you speak. Not that some Edomites may not be white men. But do you really believe that all white men in the world are Edomites? Okay, that's let's answer. That's say, are all black men Israelites? No! Okay, let's explain that. His question is, are all white people Edomites? And are all black men Israelites? Okay, let's start with the Israelite part first. Then I'm going to get to the white man part. Go to Deuteronomy 28. Are all black men... No, first get me Exodus 11 and 7. I, I, yes, okay. You know the answer. Okay. Exodus 11, verse 7. Let's deal with the all black men Israelites. Come on, brother. Exodus, Exodus 11, verse 7. Exodus 11, verse 7. But against any of the children of Israel, but against any of the children of Israel, shall not a dog move his tongue. Shall not a dog move his tongue. Against man or beast. Against man or beast. That ye may know how that the Lord does put a difference between the Egyptians and Israel. So all black men are not Israelites. So because the Egyptians were black like us, dark skin. But there was a difference between the Africans and the Israelites. Now let's deal with the Edomites. Let's go to Genesis 25 and 25. Let's start there. 
Like, uh, I'll, I'll bring it out. No, let me go through the scriptures first and I'll say something. Genesis 25, 25. Genesis 25 and 25. And the first came out red. Now, let me start. Let me set up the scenario for us all. Isaac, can, Isaac, Rebecca could not have children. She prayed to the Lord for children, okay? So the Lord blessed her with children. Now it's talking about they came out fraternal twins. Let's start with the first boy. Come on. And the first came out red, all over like a hairy garment. So the first child came out red. Why was the child red? Because the blood showed through the child's skin. I don't know if y'all ever been down south. What do we call white people down south? Redneck. Well, thank you, brother. Redneck. <laughs> he said redneck. And it's not, we, why do we call them that? Because when they get in the sun, they get real red. Not just their neck. All over, they get red. Come on, read it again. And, and the first came out red. All over like a hairy garment. And they called his name Esau. And they called his name Esau. And after that came his brother out. And after that came his brother out, Jacob. And his brother took hold on Esau's heel. And his brother took hold on Esau's heel. And his name was called Jacob. And his name was called Jacob. Now when you read this, they never mention the color of Jacob. Why? Because Jacob was the same color as mother, father, Adam, Eve from the beginning. But Esau was different. So the Bible specifies what he looked like. They said, this boy is red. Now, jump down to where it said they called his name Edom. What verse is that? 30. Verse 30. Thank you. And Esau said to Jacob, feed me, I pray thee, with that same red pottage, for I am faint. Therefore was his name called Edom. So Esau said, feed me, I pray thee, with that same red pottage. Same as what? Same as his complexion. That same red pottage that looked like, let me eat that. And he was called Edom because the word Edom, E-D-O-M, means red. Now let's get the prophecies about Edom in case there's any confusion about who Esau, who Edom is. Go to Obadiah. So give me, you know what I want? I want the prophecy about when Isaac put the blessings on the boys. Gen uh, no, no, no. Genesis uh, 30, 30, 27. Bear with me a second. It's been a while. It's been a while. Um, not there. Nope. It's Genesis 27, I think. Let me see. Let me see. And Jacob said, uh, okay, here it goes. Genesis 27. Listen to the blessing that Isaac put on Esau. Why are we reading this about Esau? Because I said Esau was the white man. A young lady across the street said, no, he's not. So the first clue we got about Esau is that he's red, right? That's what we read. Red complexion. So now here's the next blessing. Genesis 27, verse 39. And Isaac, and Isaac his father, answered and said unto him, Behold, thy dwelling shall be the fatness of the earth. Start up in verse 28, 38 so they know who we're reading about. And Esau said unto his father, Has thou but one blessing, my father? Bless me, and even me also, O my father. And Esau lifted up his voice and wept. And Esau, Isaac, and Isaac his father answered and said unto him, Behold, thy dwelling shall be the fatness of the earth. Meaning Esau would live in the best places on the earth. But how would they get there? Come on. And of the dew of the heavens, and of the dew of the heavens, from above, from above, meaning wherever the dew would land, Esau would inhabit that place. And by the sword, remember, we want this part right here. And by the sword shall thou live, and by the sword shall you live. So how would Esau get to dwell in the fatness of the earth where all the dew fall? By sword, meaning war. How did they get and take America? By conquering. How did they get to Russia? Conquering. Europe. Conquering. Africa. Conquering. China. Conquering. But remember, Britain was over in China during the Boxers' Rebellion. They conquered and lived in all these lands. Now, go to Obadiah. So there's another clue. Esau would be red and hairy. That's why they make raisins, Gillette raisins and all that. 
Then it said Esau would live by the sword. Esau would conquer and live in the fatness of the earth, the best places on the earth. Esau would live there. He would conquer by the sword. Now, Obadiah, start at verse 1. The vision of Obadiah, that said the Lord God concerning Edom. Concerning who? Concerning Edom. Concerning Edom, the Edomites, children of Esau. We have heard a rumor from the Lord, an ambassador is sent among the heathen. Arise ye and let us rise up against her in battle. That's a prophecy of what is going to come to pass. When the nations rise up against America and Europe, that's what's going to happen. Behold, I have met, behold, I have made thee small among the heathen. So God made Edom small, meaning disliked among the heathen. Thou art greatly despised. Thou art greatly despised. What do the Arabs call America? The great Shatan. All these nations are turning against America. We are living in the midst of Bible prophecy. And what is the black man doing? Sleep and playing PlayStation in the barbershop. Come on. The pride in thy heart have deceived thee. So Edom is a proud nation. Read it again. The pride of thy heart have deceived thee. Thou that dwellest in the cliffs of the rock. The pride of Edom's heart has deceived them. Thou that dwellest in the cliffs of the rock. In Genesis, they dwelt in Mount Seir. During the Middle Ages, they dwelt in the Caucasus Mountains of Georgia, Russia. That's why they call themselves Caucasians. What does Caucasian mean? Cave dweller comes from the Caucasus Mountains of Georgia, Russia. Come on. Thou that dwellest in the cliffs of the rock, whose habitation is high. Meaning Edom likes to live in skyscrapers. When they build, they build high, they build tall. Come on. That said in his heart, who shall bring me down to the ground? So Edom is a nation, a red nation, lives by the sword and says, who can bring me down to the ground? What does that mean? It means the, they have so much pride, they don't believe anybody can conquer them. We get to it, but I'm sick in the scenario right here. Nobody else can make this. The Chinese can't make this statement. Okay? The American Indian can't make that statement. Read it again. Thy pride in thy heart have deceived thee. Thou that dwellest in the cliffs of the rocks, whose habitation is high. That said in his heart, who shall bring me down to the ground? Don't thou exert thyself as the eagle. What is the symbol of America? The eagle. Where's the young lady that stood across the street and said no? The one, oh, she had to leave. See, she, when, they, when our people yell out these things, they really don't care about what God says. Because we ain't giving it to you step by step, but she's too busy. She got to leave. Read it again. Thou that exert thyself as the eagle. What is the symbol of America? The eagle. What was the symbol of ancient Greece? The eagle. What was the symbol of ancient Rome? The eagle. What was the symbol of Spain? The eagle. What was the symbol of England and Europe? The eagle. Read it again. Thou that exhort thyself as the eagle, as though thou set thy nest amongst the stars. Who's doing space travel? Who set their nest among the stars?